Is it cheaper to build an iPhone from scratch using only AliExpress? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna do in this video. Inside this box, we have every single part needed to build an iPhone 13 Pro from scratch. I made sure to get the cheapest yet highest reviewed products from them because, well, I don't wanna use them and find out they don't work, which could definitely happen. If this works, I'll let you guys know if it's cheaper and I'll actually drop the links to everything I bought here in case you wanna try this yourself, although I don't recommend you do. I had my editor open these up and make sure we actually got what we ordered, but I haven't seen them yet, so I'll be just as surprised as you are. Uh, we'll clean this up a little bit, move everything aside. So there's actually a lot more to ordering this than I thought there was. You have to order a lot of the small parts individually, and the price was really starting to add up. Let's take a look at what's inside this box. Uh, oh. Looks like that's the actual phone housing. Let's see what's inside. So I ordered this part with the small parts as well because it was the most cost-effective solution. However, sometimes the small parts are very low quality and you're about to understand what I mean in one second. We'll pull this out. Oh. Huh. This actually looks pretty good. It also came with the seal, which is very important. I didn't even think to order this, but thankfully they gave it to me. And it comes with the battery pull tabs. That's nice of them. Let's take a look at the actual housing. By small parts, I basically just mean the loudspeaker, the charging port, whatever antennas are here, wireless charging coil, the flash, and some more antennas up there. All this stuff, if you were to buy individually, would cost so much more. So buying this as one whole piece is the most cost-effective thing to do, and it's also less work for me. We'll take this out. So when you buy stuff from AliExpress, they always come with weird stamps, and uh, they also come with stickers, but underneath the sticker, oh my god, it's Taptic Engine. This is a trademark of Apple, I believe, so they have to cover it. They also do the same thing on the back. The Apple logo is covered, but it is there. Let's take a look at the next part. We'll put this aside. We have this little guy. Let's see what's inside. Loudspeaker, earpiece, Wi-Fi. Huh? Oh, yeah. So this is just the earpiece speaker. The housing didn't come with it, so I had to buy it on its own. Without this, you wouldn't have the uh, dual audio, and you also wouldn't be able to take phone calls. On to the next one. Let's see what's inside. Ali Sunny. This was such an expensive part. I was really trying to save money, but unfortunately, I, I just couldn't. It was expensive. There's nothing you could do about it. Most of these on the market are actually Apple original. It's actually kind of hard to find a camera that's fake for iPhones. I don't exactly know why, but if we take a look at this camera, we'll probably find that it's original, and I kind of want to see right now. Well, I kind of want to keep that on because I don't want to get dust and debris in this one. Put that back so to check if this is original we can actually just kind of lift up the flex cable and voila you can see there is an apple logo there so that one's original there's obviously three cameras here so there's going to be more than one flex cable let's take a look at the other one and very hard to see you can see the reflection of the metal there's another apple logo there so all original parts here good job still cost me a lot of money though this is, oh, the most important part of the phone, the motherboard. But it's not just the motherboard, it's also, oh, oh. I honestly forgot to buy the screws, but the motherboard set came with them, so thank God. We also have the bottom piece screws that are pretty important, not gonna lie. And we have another seal. We have uh, trash tools, I hate these. I don't know why they always come with them. They're terrible, don't use these. They will make you want to smash your head in um, whatever meme we have available. Now let's take a look at this. You can see this comes with the front camera. Why does this come with the front camera? Well, obviously Face ID. Apple serialized Face ID, so um, to get that working, you obviously need the corresponding components, which in this case is the front camera. We have the dot projector, the infrared camera. These two come together so that you can still have Face ID, and uh, well, I hope that this is even working. The reviews were pretty good, so hopefully it is. The board actually looks fine. Let's get a closer look here. This was the, probably the most expensive part of this all. We do have some stickers on here and some writing, so I'm sure some repairs have been made to this board before, uh, unsure of the extent. However, a good sign is that all the protective coatings on the board are still there, so. This is a bigger box, hopefully uh, it's a good one. 
Oh, it's the OLED display. Uh, AliExpress has a variety of displays up for display, uh, but a lot of them don't look that great. So I just went for the cheapest one that I could find that is an actual OLED, not an LCD. Uh, again, uh, crappy tools, nobody needs that. Uh oh. Let's take a look at this display. So a few things we're looking for is how big the chin is, how the display looks, uh, how the chips look on the display, how the flex cable looks. There's, there's a lot when it comes to displays and it's actually really hard to find a good quality display on the market, especially on AliExpress. Oh, um, yeah, I don't, I don't like what I'm seeing here. So we have a weird chip over here. It says Latisse. I think that is used to grow eyelashes, but we also have OLED on the, the flex cable. This flex cable appears to be aftermarket. Sometimes they actually take original Apple flex cables and then put them on their displays. The actual display itself seems to be a bit thicker than what I'm used to seeing. Not really a good sign when you're buying a display. You wanna avoid displays like this for the most part, but I'm on a budget. We'll know when we actually turn this on, but you can see that, yeah, the bezels look larger than what I think they're supposed to look like. My biggest concern is whether the display works because the defective rate on these displays is just insane. What is this? This is obviously the battery. We'll take a look. Oh, okay, interesting. Oh, that's actually really nice. So this battery uh, looks exactly like the Apple original battery. Very cool. And it also comes with the forbidden cheese on the back. Um, hopefully this works. Uh, it looks great and looks Apple original. So we probably won't have any issues with the battery. Oh, what the hell? Uh, more seals. Thank you, China. This is the proximity and ambient light sensor. This didn't come with the display. We had to buy it on its own. Pretty expensive for what it is, but it's just, you can't get around this, you need this. So we'll put this aside. And I think we're almost done here. We have the LiDAR sensor. These are actually serialized and you do lose some features when you replace it with a non-original one, but it's nothing crazy and most people don't even notice. We'll put that aside. And the last one, what? Uh, it looks like we're done. Uh, let's start building this phone. So a few things we want to look for on the housing before we start building anything is whether eh, it's not. So there is supposed to be a little nub here for the SIM ejector tray. Basically it pushes on the board and then pops out the SIM tray, but it's not there. Let's see if we have it in here and looks like it's right over there. So we're going to take this with our tweezers. A lot of people install housings and they forget this and then it's just awkward because you're stabbing the SIM ejector hole and nothing's happening. Now it's in there and look, when I put something in the SIM tray, it pops out and then the board's like, okay, let's pop out the SIM and that's how that works. Next up, um, honestly, I'm, I'm a little bit worried because I have no screw chart or uh, anything of the sort. So putting the screws in this is going to be, uh, <laughs> we're going to take the board and we're gonna take the battery. I wanna kind of visualize what I need to do first here before I actually do it so I'm not wasting any time. I think before we do anything, we should probably install the LiDAR sensor because that goes under the camera. So let's do that. We're gonna take our LiDAR and we're gonna place it over here. Now, to the best of my knowledge, there is a plate that goes over the LiDAR usually to hold it down and unfortunately, the screws that we got didn't have everything, so we had to wait and purchase more screws again. They came really fast, surprisingly, and they weren't expensive at all. This has all the shields that we need. This one doesn't. Let's find the LiDAR shield first. These are actually called cowlinks, I believe, but nobody likes calling them that, so I probably won't. And this looks like it could be it. That looks pretty good to me. What do you guys think? So right off the bat, you can see there's a tiny bit of a gap under the shield here. And that tells me that we need one of those big boy screws, one of the thicker screws that house other screws. So before we install this, we have to put one of those underneath the shield, which is exactly what we're going to do. To be honest, when you're screwing stuff in an iPhone, it's better to not have a screw at all than put the wrong screw in. Because if you put a long screw in, well, it can pierce the back glass and the whole project would be a complete failure. I'm gonna go for this guy. He looks pretty chill. We'll screw this guy over here and then we'll place the shield over. I'm gonna say that looks good to me. So we're gonna just go ahead and screw that in. Perfect. Now, I think we're all good to install the back camera. Before we do that, we have to make sure there's no dust. And now we're going to put the cameras down. Nice. Now we can install the shield. 
It looks like we're missing another one of those bigger screws. So we're gonna have to find another one. I'll just grab this guy. He looks good enough. And we're going to put him over here. If you think you're good at repairing phones, you should try this. It's a challenge. That all looks pretty good. Finding the correct screws for the right slots was very difficult to say the least. I did find out later though that Apple has a screw chart available for their iPhones online. Why did they black out their own logo though? Now it's time to install the front cameras before we install the earpiece speaker. The front cameras actually came with this little yellow tape that they put over the camera and the infrared camera. That's pretty cool because it prevents me from damaging them. For the most part, these front cameras don't have any screws. So by placing the speaker over it, it looks like we'll have to remove the camera shield first. What's really interesting is the earpiece speaker connects via these two contact points to the pads over here, and then that connects to the board. But all the sound is funneled through the speaker up here, which actually has a rubber ring here to keep the phone water resistant. And that rubber ring connects to the housing over here. There's a little cavity and all the water, if you were to submerge this phone into water, would go in the speaker and wouldn't leave the speaker. We're going to insert the earpiece speaker and perfect it looks like it is holding down the front camera so we have nothing to worry about we have to find screws for the earpiece speaker um, we'll just pick out some ones that we think are appropriate the iPhone 13 Pro is now looking pretty good I'm not gonna lie all that's really left to do is install the motherboard install the battery install the screen and then test everything out because we still have no idea if this thing even works and I'm kind of scared to do that honestly because there's so many parts that could be faulty or could fail it's uh it's gonna be a surprise for even me we'll go ahead and install the board now we can slide this in it's quite difficult to get this in with this many flex cables you gotta peel them up sometimes I'll install the board and then realize that there's a flex cable under the board so I have to unscrew it again and then peel up the flex cable and do it again I think we should be good yeah everything looks okay so this little gold ring over here to me indicates that there is a screw that's supposed to go there that holds down the board it's kind of like a protective layer we'll take this screw and we'll test it out nice okay that worked now what i do with the battery is i usually remove this it's the peel for the forbidden cheese and before i fully place the battery down i connect it to the board i do this because i want the positioning of the battery to be right so that it's easy to click it in instead of struggling and fighting the phone there we go that looks very clean now we're going to click in all the connectors. There's a lot of them, but this process is really satisfying. We're just going to go one by one. Sometimes they're misaligned, which makes life incredibly hard. So you can see that we are missing a connector over here, this fat one there, but that's for a 5G connector, I believe. I think that's a region thing. So some regions will have it, some don't. Canada doesn't have these. We'll see if that affects anything later. But as of right now, I don't think it will. If you guys are enjoying the video so far, comment the Apple emoji and let me know because uh, I need some moral support. This looks really good. It honestly looks OEM almost without the drawing and the weird stuff. We'll go ahead and install the SIM. Perfect. It's time to work with this very crappy Latisse screen. Here is our proximity sensor. We'll get this out of its plastic. So we're gonna remove this blue tape. And this actually says MK. And there's actually an Apple logo here, which means this is also OEM. I hope, you never really know nowadays. We'll put that down, align everything. And there we go. There's still a plate that's supposed to go over this. We have to find it. I think it's this one and it is. So now we have to find very small screws because this is extremely fragile. If I get a longer screw and screw this in, well, <laughs> the OLED is done. We'll grab this one, it's pretty small. I'm not even gonna screw it in all the way because I'm scared. Damn. There we go. Now, <laughs> the moment of truth. Does this thing boot? Let's find out. We'll plug this in and we'll plug the display connector in and we'll plug the battery in. Oh, I'm actually nervous right now. If this works, I'll let you guys know how much this costs in comparison to a refurbished device. 
And if you're crazy enough to recreate this, well, I'll drop the link to every single part that I bought in this video for you guys to try. I don't think you will, but if you do, I salute you. It's time to test it out. We're gonna first just press and hold the power button. If that doesn't work, I'm not gonna freak out because it'll probably just need the charger. <sighs> Let's try it out. Three, two, one. Oh, okay. That's the Apple logo. That is the Apple logo. There's still so much to test. Oh. Oh my god! It booted! It's on! It says Beijing, that's how you know it's from China, but it is on! That is insane! No sim available, that's a good sign. Damn! We know that the screen works, but do we know that everything else works? Not yet, but we will, very soon. Let's go ahead and hit the flash icon, and... We already ran into our first problem. What the hell? Looks like it was just disconnected. Hopefully nothing else is uh, disconnected. And let's go into the actual phone. So obviously we are going to get some uh, unknown part messages. That doesn't affect anything too much. It is kind of annoying, but nothing to really stress about. The one thing that uh, needs to work is the face ID because we paid extra for this motherboard for the face ID to actually work. So this display is actually not bad at all. I thought it would be terrible based on the, the build quality. It it is still a little thicker than what I'd like it to be, but it looks like a pretty good quality display, I'm not gonna lie. We'll go ahead into the camera app and check that out. So we have the wide angle, we have the main camera, and we have the three times camera. That all seems to be working. The front camera seems to be working as well. We're a little bit green right now, but hello. And let's check out those videos and see if the audio is working. The front camera seems to be working as well. We're a little bit green right now, but... Now I definitely want to test Face ID, but to do that, we're going to have to open this up, remove these yellow stickers, and slightly click in the screen. We'll head to Settings, Face ID, and let's see if this works. It does seem like it's working, and it actually works. AliExpress. Thank you. There are a few caveats with this build, but I mean, everything works. So as I promised, let's talk about the pricing. What you gonna do, Jerry? Show me the money! The most expensive part of this AliExpress phone is obviously going to be the motherboard and the front camera. Those came in at $220 Canadian, and I'm still surprised that they even work. The next thing that costs the most is gonna be the front screen. The front screen was $115 Canadian. It's good, but it's not as good as the original. Still, it's definitely better than what I thought it would be. Next up, we have the housing with the little parts. This was $88 Canadian for the actual frame and the charging port and everything else. The only thing that I'm really noticing with this is that the vibration on it is not as strong as the original. It feels very weak and honestly sounds kind of weird. The back camera was $76 and well, it's Apple original so that seems pretty fair to me. I made sure to apply as many coupons as I could to bring down the overall price and uh, well, this AliExpress phone that I built from scratch cost me $502 Canadian. Oh, uh, we, we forgot the screws. The screws were an additional $5, so it cost me $507. That's absolutely insane, considering the average refurbished iPhone 13 Pro costs around $700 Canadian. Although doing this is incredibly risky, and I can't say I recommend it, but if you want to try it, well, the risk is uh, yours to take. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.